Hello, hello, hi everyone. Guys, I have something special for you today because uh, I just created a new mind map um, for one of our clients actually. So um, just yesterday or the day before we were going through a few of their positions. So they are a staffing agency. They um, are shifting their focus to IT positions and they struggle with some of them like a Java full stack developer. So um, I walked them through the process. I walked uh, the team through how to even think about this position. So what is important? What are the keywords? How to find these uh, full stack Java developers? What are the essential must have skills to see on the profile? And uh, eventually how to come up with some really cool Boolean search strings, the filters. And um, after we finished, I thought it could be useful to some of uh, you guys who may also struggle with this position, a Java full stack engineer. So here I am um, streaming this video so you guys can also see this mind map. I'll show it to you here. I just printed it out, but I'll also uh, show you a PDF. Okay, so uh, let's get the fun started. I hope you guys are still with me. So um, I'll show you the uh, mind map in five, four, three, two, one, here it is. So we are at first looking at the uh, job requirement. So um, this is a snippet of a very typical traditional job requirement of a Java enterprise engineer. So uh, five years of experience, bachelor degree, three or more years of experience with uh, software development, three years of experience as a developer using Java and JavaScript. We need to know that these two are programming languages, one for the backend, the other for both backend and frontend. Proficient with full stack, modern web development tech technologies, React, Java, Spring. Um, proficient in relational database languages and tools. So essentially guys, you can see some of these um, typical requirements. There are standard IT positions uh, such as a uh, full stack Java developer, front end um, React engineer, a data engineer or an Oracle data warehouse consultant, right? Like there are some typical positions and uh, we recruiters just need to be aware of uh, the typical requirements. So once you see a requirement such as this one, then um, you can literally just copy and paste it to some other similar requirement experience with cloud, either Amazon um, Web Services or Azure or GCP. So cloud is uh, very common these days. A lot of companies have shifted from on-premise to the cloud. So um, now when we go through these requirements, we will discover that a lot of these are um, getting uh, mainstream, so to speak, these days, because lots of developers use cloud anyway. Lots of developers use containers such as uh, Kubernetes, Amazon Web Services, uh, all right? So, so these are some of the uh, common technologies that a lot of senior React, or uh, sorry, senior Java developers use. Expertise in uh, REST APIs or message queues such as RabbitMQ, Kafka, like this is again quite common. I'm not saying that everyone you know in IT knows this, but backend Java engineers, especially senior ones, they know it. Okay, so once we realize that this is quite common, we need to go through a series of steps. The first step is to realize what is special about this job requirement. What are the typical skills? And um, then we will take it from there. So what do you guys think? Sounds like, sounds like a good plan. Are you guys ready? I see one thumbs up. So um, if you guys have any questions, then uh, just let me know. And uh, I'll hopefully see your comment somewhere here. Okay. Oh, Nada. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good evening or good afternoon or good morning, wherever you guys are. Nada, you are, I guess, in, uh, in Asia, so, uh, if I recall. So uh, cool. So back to the mind map. Um, where is it? Okay, so the step number one is uh, to brainstorm keywords. And this is a really important step. At first, we need to just uh, think about the position, Java full stack. What does it really mean? What are the common candidate titles? And what are the keywords specific to this typical position? So first, the common candidate titles include a full stack engineer, full stack Java engineer, senior full stack Java developer, software engineer, senior software engineer, 
Okay, so these are some of the common titles. And we could continue, of course. Uh, keywords specific to this typical position include Java, JavaScript, Spring. Since we are looking for a full stack developer who would use React, well then also React or React.js or React.js without the dot, Docker, Kubernetes, CICD, RabbitMQ or Kafka, DevOps, JUnit as the testing framework, Java Enterprise Edition, J2EE, and Jakarta EE, which is the uh, newer name for Java Enterprise Edition. Okay, so this is the first step. And um, even when I get a requirement from some of our clients to go through recruitment for a very specific position, it could be, I don't know, a Java integration architect. You know, I go through the same steps. What are the common titles? What are the keywords specific to this uh, particular position? Okay, so uh, you can just take these steps and go through them, whatever position you look at. Cool, next we continue with uh, something that is specific to this particular requirement. The, uh, in this specific case, there is uh, nothing really so specific. It just reminds me some other position we were working on just recently. The uh, position was a um, front-end React engineer for a data visualization platform. So in that case, the uh, specific domain is data visualization. So essentially, we are looking for someone who used uh, who used uh, some data visualization libraries such as uh, D3 or Chart.js. But in this case, it doesn't apply. I mean, for the Java enterprise uh, developer, I'm just saying that this could be a similar case. But in this case, um, there are none, so I just skipped it. Uh, the step number three is to start sourcing on LinkedIn, but you need to use some Boolean operators, right? So what are those Boolean operators? I would separate them. One segment would be the Boolean uh, operators related to the title, and the second would be related to keywords and skills. So let's uh, look at the uh, title at first. We know that uh, the alternative to senior is SR. Okay, so senior or SR is the Boolean operator, Boolean search, and Java and developer or engineer. We know that some people write developer, some people write engineer. We don't really care, we just want both. So that's why, that's, that's how we can use this Boolean operator, or it needs to be in brackets. So again, senior or SR and Java and developer engineer. The second search is uh, very similar. However, I exclude those seniors. It doesn't mean that I'm not interested in seniors. It just means that there could be people who are senior, seven, eight years of experience, but they don't have it written in the title. They may have the experience, but they just don't put it inside the title field. So with this Boolean, I would uh, get the rest of full stack um, Java developers or software engineers, but those who don't have that particular uh, keyword senior. And then I can also repeat at another variation, full stack or full stack or full stack. Again, different variations just because um, that's what developers write in their profiles and developer engineer. The other title could include Java and Spring at the same time or senior consultant. Okay, so senior consultant, but that's very broad. Of course, um, we are not just interested in any um, senior consultant, but we need senior consultant who knows React and uh, Java. So that's why we need to use additional keywords in uh, such a case. So uh, that's why we have the uh, other node. So keywords include Java and Spring and React or React.js or React.js and Docker or Kubernetes. So this could be one. I'm not saying that this is the uh, complete list of uh, these keywords. Of course, you can come up with different variations. I'm just showing you what works in this particular case. So the keyword Java, and Spring, and React, and Docker or Kubernetes. These two are, 
um, not alternatives, but these two go usually together. So it's okay if a developer has just one or the other listed on their profile. Or another keyword would be React or React.js or Java, JavaScript, Spring, Docker or Kubernetes. These two are, as I mentioned, um, they go together. They are not alternatives, but they go together. CI CD or CI CD with slash without slash Jenkins or Travis. These are two different tools that substitute each other. RabbitMQ or Kafka. Again, you can just use them in your search. DevOps, JUnit or Cucumber, Java EE, like Enterprise Edition, or J2 EE or Jakarta EE. Okay, so different variations. And this is what I really like about uh, about IT recruitment. Like there are so many different options uh, and it's uh, so much fun, right? Eventually, when you are going through this uh, discovery process, you try, you know, you research and uh, eventually you find great developers. So it's so rewarding. Um, Nella is asking if she can use plus minus symbols. Uh, um, you can also LinkedIn doesn't, um, like on LinkedIn, in the official documentation, it is written that they don't recommend to use the minus sign because it may be deprecated at some point, but now it works. However, you can use not instead. Okay, so it could be, it could be not senior, not SR and Java and full stack and full stack. Okay, so it works, uh, but you can also use not instead. Um, so what I also like to think about, especially when working with my colleagues, is the typical career path. So that's why the step number four is the uh, typical career path. Okay, the, the typ typical career path to look for um, includes the um, uh, different, different uh, career paths these IT professionals went through. So for example, someone can start as a tester, then after two, three years, shift to software development. Then the person becomes a backend engineer, then a senior backend engineer. So someone like this would be a good fit. Another typical career path would be for someone to start as a junior backend developer. And then the person would be a junior backend engineer or a mid-level backend engineer, you know, can change from one company to the other after half year or a year, and then become a mid-level full stack engineer and then senior backend engineer. Okay, so like these combinations, these are just examples, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you have to go exactly after these profiles, but when you see that someone deviates from this too significantly, for example, someone becomes a product owner, well then that person would not be a good fit for a senior uh, full stack um, engineer anymore. Or someone may start as a QA specialist, uh, then to work as a backend engineer for a few years, and then becomes a senior backend engineer who uses Java. Of course, we are focusing on the uh, Java uh, backend skill, so um, that People may not have the keyword Java on their profile, but they may have it in their skills listed. So that's why when you go through all these profiles, you need to match the, the candidate that you are looking at with the job requirement. So at the beginning, I showed you this uh, job requirement. So um, you just need to somehow keep it in your mind and then evaluate every profile you see. And you just think, what about this current title? Is it a good fit or not? If the person has one of those titles, um, as we discussed at the beginning, full stack engineer, full stack Java, senior full stack, software engineer, senior SW engineer, like that could be a good fit. So that's the title. What about the previous title? So if someone shifted from a product owner, then probably it would not be really a good fit. The person may not be strong enough or someone who did some uh, marketing kind of stuff uh, or sales, right? Like those people would not be strong enough technically just yet. So we need to take into consideration the previous title. Um, also the seniority, uh, the overall seniority. Um, someone may have 10 years of experience, but 
could work with Java for only uh, a year. So that would not be a good fit. We need someone who is senior overall, but also used Java for several years. Three or five, I guess, was in the requirement. Um, also, I like to consider the length in the uh, latest job. So um, I like to just skip those who have recently started in a new company because it just feels like uh, time wasted when you talk to someone who started two, three, six months ago. And of course, location, that's, uh, that's a big uh, uh, thing these days still, you know, even due to remote work, but hiring managers have some preferences due to the time zone or due to travel or whatever. So um, it's good to take it into consideration. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, just on a high level, I wanted to show you guys this mind map. I was going through exactly these steps with uh, the client of mine, the uh, staffing agency, and uh, we uh, were going through several profiles just based on exactly these keywords that I showed you. And there are some comments, so let me check it out. Um, how to find candidates with dis disabilities? Wow, that's a great question, Raj. Um, candidates with disabilities. What, what's the use case? Um, why are you looking for candidates with disabilities? Um, for IT in some particular case, or what was the, uh, what's the reason behind this question? <clears throat> okay, and meanwhile, I'll, I'll go back to the mind map um, so I can show you these uh, Boolean operators again. And uh, if at any point uh, you guys would like to get this uh, mind map and download it uh, in a PDF, then you can just go to the website itrecruitermindmaps.com and uh, you would be able to get the whole PDF. So let me just type it somewhere, HTTPS itrecruitermindmaps.com. Okay, so feel free to feel free to get it uh, if you don't have it just yet this is a new mind map i just added it earlier today to the uh, booklet with all those uh, 20 mind maps so um yeah um these are some good powerful very powerful boolean operators and you should really learn how to use these uh, boolean operators how to come up with different variations different alternatives so um at the end of the day recruitment is not that hard if you follow some structured process, if you just go through step one, brainstorm important keywords. Step two, identify some additional specific requirements. So some more keywords, then start sourcing on LinkedIn, use some powerful uh, Boolean search keywords in the title and also in uh, additional keywords. And then consider the uh, typical career path who exactly are you looking for? Who is the best fit? Who is the hiring manager really looking for? And then just match those profiles you see based on their title today and the previous one based on their seniority, length in the uh, uh, job and their location, of course. Okay, so... Um, um, yeah, Raj clarified as a part of inclusive hiring, how to find software engineers with disabilities. Um, I haven't, I haven't really looked for developers with disabilities, uh, you know, um, um, intentionally. So I'm afraid I cannot really uh, comment on this, uh, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, um, good question. I'll figure it out. Okay. So, uh, subscribe to this channel and, uh, I'll figure it out and I'll record some video. Okay. That sounds like something that more people may struggle with. So uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll try a few things and um, I'll let you know. Okay. Cool. Cool. Wonderful. Any, any further questions, guys, before we wrap it up, before we go back to work to source some candidates? Don't forget if you want these mind maps uh, and you don't have them just yet, go to the website itrecruitermindmaps.com and uh, get your booklet. All right, another also commented, uh, candidates with disabilities will come employee uh, value proposition also displays the culture of the company, also part of the inclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, uh, that's that, that's a good point. So uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for these uh, questions. Thanks uh, Nada and Raj for joining. Uh, and everyone else, have a wonderful day. We'll keep in touch.